Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's June 23rd, 2023. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy, presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, the United States gas generating systems market is now projected to witness a compound annual growth rate of 9.3% over the next decade. This coming in a brand new study published by Future Market Insights Global and Consulting. By 2033, it's anticipated the gas generating systems market will be worth more than $20.8 billion. In the 10 years from 2023 to 2033, the market is predicted to surge to a CAGR of 9.4%. It is anticipated to increase in value in 2023, rising to $8.5 billion. Numerous companies and people are looking for ways to become less reliant on the conventional power system and become energy independent. The usage of gas generating systems such as biogas generators enables users to produce their own electricity locally. Demand is anticipated to be driven by their capacity to offer a trustworthy and independent source of energy. Gas generators provide a dependable source of electricity, particularly in regions that experience regular power outages or in isolated places with limited grid connection. Sales would further be pushed by urgent requirements for emergency backup power and the need for key infrastructure, businesses, and families to operate continuously. Governments are also encouraging the use of greener and more sustainable energy sources in a number of areas, offering incentives, tax exemptions, or subsidies to organizations and people who invest in gas generating systems falls under this category. It is predicted that such support will boost demand and promote market expansion. Next up, some small changes could wind up having a big impact as the EPA recently published an update to their Renewable Fuel Standards Program this Wednesday. It includes a few small tweaks that industry experts say could have a big impact on the recycling of food waste. Wastewater treatment plants currently operate over a thousand anaerobic digesters in the United States, but just a fraction of them presently co-digest food waste alongside other biosolids. A change in the way credits are apportioned under the Renewable Fuel Standard removes the financial de-incentive that was preventing some plants from accepting food waste, now opening the door for hundreds more to provide a method of repurposing organic waste. Patrick Surfass, executive director of the American Biogas Council, said, quote, Food waste recycling related to biogas has been artificially suppressed by the way the renewable fuel standard had been treating food waste that's added to farm-based or municipal biogas systems. I'm really hoping that this transforms food waste recycling. All the projects that are already participating in the renewable fuel standard can now just generate more biogas and more revenue, not just from the biogas, but from accepting tipping fees without much financial downside for doing so. End quote. And now, how would you like to be paid to recycle? Well, one of the world's largest companies is now paying people for their electronic waste. Walmart Incorporated is now offering money for certain used electronic devices to help keep electronic waste out of landfills. For this program, they are partnering with Texas-based company CE Exchange. A list of accepted devices is now live on Walmart's website. After filling out a brief questionnaire, customers can then print a prepaid shipping label and ship their device for free with FedEx. Walmart will then send an electronic gift card after the device has been evaluated. A spokesman for CE Exchange said, quote, Most electronic devices we receive from consumers, retailers, and manufacturers are refurbished so they can be repurposed and reused, end quote. They went on to say devices that can't be refurbished are sent to a company certified to properly dispose of electronic waste, and they are committed to making sure none will be sent to landfills. And now, just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you 
by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Going back to the EPA, the organization announced the formal establishment of the agency's first ever National Environmental Youth Advisory Council. The NEYAC will provide independent advice and recommendations to Administrator Michael S. Regan on how to increase the EPA's efforts to address a range of environmental issues as they relate to youth communities. The NEYAC will provide a critical perspective on how the impacts of climate change and other environmental harms affect youth communities. The EPA is soliciting applications for youth to fill 16 vacancies on the council. Selected applicants will contribute to a balance of perspectives, backgrounds, and experience of the council and will be appointed by the administrator. As a first-of-its-kind committee, all members of the NEYAC will be between the ages of 16 and 29. As part of the agency's commitment to centering environmental justice communities, at least 50% of the overall membership will come from, reside primarily in, and or do most of their work in disadvantaged communities as defined by the Climate and Economic Justice Screening Tool. Regan said, quote, we can't tackle the environmental challenges of our time without input from our younger communities who've long been at the forefront of social movements. This committee will help ensure that the voices and perspectives of our youth are included and valued in the EPA's decision making as we continue to advance President Biden's commitment to ensuring everyone in this country has access to clean air, safe water and healthy land. Now, and for generations to come, end quote. Now some big news for one of America's most iconic cities, Veridi Energy has partnered with American Organic Energy to develop one of the largest food waste to renewable natural gas projects in the United States. The project is expected to convert 210,000 tons of waste per year, which is equivalent to the entire annual food waste of Dallas, Texas. The new facility will be the first anaerobic digester to process food waste in the New York City metropolitan area. The project will divert food waste from both landfills located up to 300 miles away and transform it into RNG via anaerobic digestion and into other renewable products such as fertilizer. The project will generate emissions reduction equivalent to nearly 100,000 tons of CO2 per year and is projected to produce renewable fuels equivalent to 10 million gallons of gasoline annually. CEO of Veridi Dan Krauss said, quote, this landmark project demonstrates to the renewable energy industry that large scale food waste to RNG products are viable as robust financial investments and as environmentally impactful solutions to our greenhouse gas emissions and food waste crises, end quote. And lastly, Ohio Senate Bill 119 was passed unanimously 30 to 0, and will provide significant changes to waste management across the state. Sponsored by State Senator Bill Reinecke, SB 119 allows for a new permissive variable fee for the disposal of construction and demolition debris, identical to the district disposal fees for solid waste. The money collected will fund local boards of health to help mitigate the impacts on the health, safety, and welfare of citizens living near a landfill. Reinecke explained he intends for the funding to go toward more adequate inspections of landfills. Quote, this gives the opportunity for the Seneca County Health Department to have much better oversight, valid oversight, end quote. The bill also allows solid waste management districts to pass funds on the cities, counties, boards of health, municipalities, and townships so they can mitigate impacts on health, safety, and welfare or for recycling initiatives. 
Reinecke went on to say, quote, Ohio has been the destination of out-of-state trash at the cost of the health and safety of our citizens. Out-of-state trash deserves to be treated the exact same as waste collected locally, and the communities near and around these districts deserve the resources to combat the health and safety concerns it brings. Senate Bill 119 includes no new fee increases, nor does it impose any new regulations. The permissive fee allows for more oversight and enforcement of current regulations on landfills by local boards of health, which should be empowered to protect their constituents. End quote. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for June 23, 2023, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we'll see you back next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.